come together this morning and sing a song like this, knowing that, Father, you are one, and that, Father, thankful for each one that is able to be here this morning, and, Father, being with those that maybe be sick or maybe working, pray that you'll be with them. Pray, Lord, for your service. Pray for the pastor as he brings the message you put upon his heart. Thanks again for each one that is able to come. Let each one be fed this day. It's in thy son's precious name we pray. Amen. Again, we do welcome everyone. It's good to see all who are with us. In the way of announcements on the bottom of your morning worship, you will notice just a few things. And those who are listening in, just listen to what is being said. Now, remember, too, in the back, there is hand sanitizers if you feel like you want to do that. And also, there are masks if you feel like you want to wear a mask. Uh, there are on the, on the foyer table. You can take one. And as you leave, if you want, if you want a mask, take one with you uh, as well. Uh, that's in the back in the foyer. 
Uh, 25th of May is Memorial Weekend, so be aware of that. Now, how many beaches and how many things will or will not be open is anybody's guess and how they will monitor that. Uh, as far as I know, a lot of people, they go to the beaches. and So, so Ginger, you need to be careful when you go to the beach, Ginger. Okay. So, just be careful. Be careful of those crabs, huh? <laughs> They won't have to worry about me going to the beach. Oh, the beach. Make sure you put suntan lotion on. Don't get too burnt. Just be careful out there. Uh, the 31st of May, the last Sunday, is Pentecost. It's a day in which we remember the first Pentecost. It's always 50 days after Easter. So that's why if this year it falls on the 31st of May. So we're remembering the day of Pentecost. And, of course, that's when the... Holy Spirit came upon the, uh, the apostles and those in the upper room, and then also, as well, the many, many who believe, over 3,000 and so many as well. And it's also when the Christian church first, basically, they believe, first began as well, as far as on Pentecost itself, as to where it, the, the, everything just uh, came into being or fell into motion, and the Lord just worked everything out. So it's a remembrance of the first Pentecost that took place 50 days after Easter. Uh, the hurricane season, of course, is upon us. It begins officially the first, but there is one named Hurricane uh, Clarence and I were talking about that. Uh, there's one out in the, in, the, in the Atlantic and it's heading east and it's, Clarence and I both said, let it go east. So they keep on going. and. Uh, they, they do nothing at all. So, but officially, it's June the first. Uh, Father's Day is the twenty-first. Now, until until further notice, we will know we will not have Sunday school or Wednesday night Bible study until we feel comfortable and, uh, and until we talk to uh, different people and see what we're going to do or not do in relationship to the Sunday school classes as well as Wednesday night Bible study as far as being here. So that is still going to be on hold for a while. So be aware of that. We do want to be cautious. Uh, and even in, when things all open up now, uh, they have opened up this past weekend with salons and um, uh, restaurants and different other places, you need to be on the side of caution. Uh, use common sense concerning if you don't feel comfortable in going somewhere, then don't. But don't, how can I explain it? But, but just, just don't put yourself as to where you're going to become a hermit uh, and be afraid. Don't be afraid, but be cautious. Use common sense. Uh, and if, again, if you don't feel like it's, you're comfortable, then don't do it. Uh, for those who do wear masks, that's fine. If you don't, then that's fine. But understand there are places where it's mandatory where they tell you, if you want to do things with us, you have to have a mask on. Don't get mad. Don't get upset. Just do whatever, you know, accordingly. Um, you know, we, we as believers need to set the example as to what we are to do and how we are to do it as well. So do, do it accordingly to the Word of God. Brandy? Um, I was going to ask, is the ladies' Bible study on Telecommunication still happening? Say it again, I'm sorry, I didn't hear. The Bible study on Wednesday virtual, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wednesday night women's Bible study is still virtual, yes, and it's still coming on. Uh, Joe, further notice, that, that is always coming, that, that's coming there for the, for the women, yes. And that starts at what time? 6.30. That starts at 6.30, yes. So, so yes. Any more information on that, you can talk to Debbie Trim concerning that. Um, again, you can find us on Facebook and also on YouTube. Any other information or any other announcements we need to be aware of of anything else going on and taking place? Again, just be aware that certain things are open now according to uh, the restrictions and the guidelines passed by. Uh, the state, there are restaurants open, salons open, nail places open, and um, just, I guess, different other things that are open, but there are some things that are not open still, so uh, 
do it accordingly and however, whatever they do. I know because I, I'm going to get, probably get a haircut tomorrow and she told me I have to go get my hands washed back there, I have to put a mask on, I have to do all, I said, look, whatever you want me to do, just cut the hair. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I don't care. Uh, you know, whatever the, whatever the uh, stipulations. Um, so just, just be aware of that. Let me share with you from Psalm chapter 24, from the Word of God. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in the holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to an idol or swear by what is false, he will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God his Savior. Such is the generation of those who seek the Lord, who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O you gates, be ye lifted up, you ancient doors. The King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Lift, up, lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord Almighty. He is the King of glory. May God bless the reading of his word. Let us continue as we worship the Lord and sing unto him, hymn number 515, There's a Land Fairer Than Day. Pray for those first responders 
as well as the many people that are trying to find a vaccine, develop one, and, and what's all going on with all of that concerning uh, the corona. So just pray for the whole situation and for the different people as well. Uh, prayer of Thanksgiving, Dolores, uh, I am glad to see her here. Pray for her recovery as uh, she had a um, little minor surgery for her breast cancer on her other breast. So just prayer. Thanksgiving, everything worked out and you're doing good, I take it. So everything is good. So prayer of Thanksgiving, just pray for her recovery and, uh, and well-being as well. This past Thursday, my son-in-law, Jason, had an episode. They had to rush him to the hospital in Texas. Uh, he had an intestinal hernia. Is that right? Yeah, well, the, uh, yeah, it, it, it was twisted. The colon and the intestines were twisted around each other. They had no idea what was going on. He was just in a lot of pain. And they finally got him to the hospital, took, took a CT scan, and that's what they found out. So. Uh, so uh, Thursday night, laparoscopically, they went in there and untwisted it, and everything, everything is great. He's home now, uh, recuperating. Um, he's got three three nurses taking care of him over there. Uh, the wife and two kids, they're all taking care of him. Uh, so, but he's he's doing good. So, but just continue to pray for Jason and his recovery as well. Of course, we want to continue member Johnny Garrett with his ongoing treatment for his cancer and all that he's dealing with, with new uh, treatments and new stuff that they are doing with him as well. So do pray for Johnny Garrett and his ongoing battle and his treatment with cancer. Uh, update with Tracy, they are seeing an infectious disease person uh, with him. Um, he is being uh, looked at uh, by that. I talked to her uh, this morning. Uh, right before I came here, after talking to someone else, I said, no, I don't know, but then I called Karen, and she told me that they are treating him, and the infectious disease person seemed to think that they will be able to put a pacemaker in him, that it wouldn't affect, really, the pacemaker, but they don't know yet, so they'll find out this week. But they got there, so he's under, so he's doing some, they're doing some more treatments, he's doing better, uh, so... Uh, concerning what's going on. Home, right? Yes, he is home. Yes, he is home and, uh, and, uh, and so forth. So they, they're going to know, she said, uh, hopefully Monday or Tuesday may have some more information concerning that. So just be in prayer for Tracy and Karen, both of them, especially Tracy as he continues to battle his infection, what he's got and what, what's going on as well him. Uh, prayer of Thanksgiving. It's good to have Ryan here with us after his uh, bypass surgery and it's been weeks and weeks and weeks and Ryan said he feels like a 19 year old now. That's the news I think him on the work. Wait now, he didn't say nothing about work. Now you gotta understand, 19 year old work. <laughs> No, 19 on the work. Okay. No. Uh -uh. I mean, you, you, you know how that is. I mean, you didn't work either when you were 19. <laughs> anyway, but it's good to have Brian and Mandy. It's good to have everybody here with us. On the prayer request, concerns, Thanksgiving, or whatever you would like to share with us this morning. Any, any, anything or anyone else? Uh, Sandy Deal. You're welcome. Yes. Good. Travel mercy, my daughter, she's coming uh, Saturday, now it's just Okay, good, good. We'll, we'll, we'll pray for her traveling mercies and also we'll continue to pray for you and the family as well. How is Jeff doing? He's doing pretty good. Okay. I often think about Jeff because I know him and him and Dave are close. I know that. Yes, I know, yeah. But I just want to continue to pray for you all and remember you all prayer. appreciate that. Other prayer requests, concerns? Brandy. My mom. Uh-huh. She really wants to be here. Right. But they are treating her like a machine at work. She works 84, 85 hours a week. Jeez. She's 
taking all nighters, and I'm not sure, but I think the stress might kill her if she doesn't get a lot of help here. <laughs> We'll continue member of Shell and Gray. Shell has been working a whole bunch there. That's what with that and uh, it's unfortunate. We'll just continue member of prayer. We sure will. Tell her we'll keep her in prayer, Randy. Others. Ginger. Yes. Right. I know. It seemed like forever, right? I know, but it's good. And it's good. And I'm glad that uh, everyone is well and everyone is doing well and uh, also so we give give glory to the Lord and give thanks to him as well. So that's that's a good thing. On the prayer, take up. I have an unspoken prayer. Sure. Okay. All right. I'm sure we'll keep keep you in prayer and the family. I'm sure we'll. Debbie. Just remember Katrina in prayer. Things are going really good. She goes to the doctor next week. Good. And then, because she's high risk, she'll start going to the hospital uh, every two weeks until the baby's born. What's the due date? The due date is July 30th. Okay. So she'll have an appointment, I think she said, next, late next week. Okay. And then, then, instead of going to the office, she'll, they'll be doing stress tests at the hospital. Okay. And everything. So she's doing pretty good. She's like borderline still, you know, they haven't decided about the... Um, Gestational diabetes. Okay. She's kind of still borderline on that. Okay. But, uh, but she's doing good. The baby looks very healthy. Okay, good. Um, I don't want to put you on the spot. But is she registered any way that we may know? I think they registered on Amazon. Uh, okay. Yeah, I don't remember. Did she say Amazon? I think it was Amazon. Okay. So if anybody would like to do anything. Yeah, because we probably won't have a shower. No, we I know. Right, because of everything, but I'm just saying if people if people do know your, your son and, and his wife. And I remember John in prayer. He's offshore right now, but okay. uh, they're getting ready to lay off 150 people. Oh, wow. You know, he's, he's hoping he's not one of them. He just don't know where, he, where he's in that. Right. But, uh, right. but he also says that probably when he comes home, he won't be offshore for a while. Okay. So there's just, they're just kind of shutting down. Right, because of the whole price. The gas stays the slow. Right. Okay. There's not going to be any more work. So right. Just remember him in prayer. Will do. Remember him and, and Katrina in prayer. Like I said, and like you said, especially Katrina in prayer with her pregnancy and what goes on with her, uh, as far as all that. And if you would like to uh, send a gift or anything to her, go on Amazon and, and post it there. As far as that. Sandy, do you? Um, first, for the lady who does uh -huh. Her son passed away that Sunday. Oh, okay. Sure, absolutely, yes. Yeah. So remember that family. We sure will. Mr. Billy. My friend George. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. In Covington. Oh, good. Oh, good. We want to remember the family. Okay. Oh, good. Oh, good. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad. But I want to continue to remember the family in prayer as well as you, as all y'all were close, as, as well as our, our fa immediate family as well. So appreciate that. Other prayer request. Ginger. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Also, I, I talked about a meeting about three or four days with Libby and Mel Sachs. Yes, yes. Yes. And she and my husband uh, are not feeling very well. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. So just remember that. Okay. All right. Remember, remember Mike and email and, and May, especially May in prayer with her neck and her problems that she's having as well. So, yes. Others. Just pray for the different people that are going back to work after a couple of months of being off. Uh, pray, pray for the many people. I know a lot of people uh, are still probably apprehensive as far as going to a restaurant or going to a facility concerning this. And just pray for all of that. And, and even for the many people that are still hunkering down and, uh, and don't want to get out as much, hey, pray for them and, and remember them in prayer. Uh, concerning 
all that is going on. Again, pray for the many who are on the front line, uh, who, are, who are every day working with these people. Um, so just pray for all of them, the policemen, the firemen, um, ambulance workers, hospital workers, all of these people, uh, you, you know, the mayor, the, Parish president, everyone, you know, Clarence back there with the, uh, he, he deals with a lot of people uh, as well as dealing with that. Again, there are so many people uh, that are dealing with the people, and we want to just pray for them and remember them in prayer as well. Pray for them and remember them. Again, pray for each other and traveling mercies for any who are and will be traveling. And again, just be careful as you do travel and as you do go around and and as you are, um, we, this thing is not over with by a long shot. Uh, you know, we still got a ways to go. And we can't put our guard down. So, again, use common sense. You know, just, uh, however you feel comfortable, and that's fine. But uh, just pray for guidance and for help from the Lord. And he'll help you and guide you and direct you. Pray for students because they're still up in the air concerning what students are going to do when it comes to school, believe, believe it or not, in the fall. Nobody really knows any, anything on that, I guess, until, uh, who knows, maybe another month or two. Then they may have an answer or maybe come up with something. I don't know what they're going to come up with. Uh, but just pray for, all, pray for the young people and pray for students everywhere as well. Let's go, Lord, and pray. Almighty God, as we come before you, Lord, you have heard all the prayers and the requests and the many things that have taken place in all of our lives. Lord, we lift up all that is taking place. And, and as you know, this virus that has set this world upside down, Lord, we lift it up and we pray for your help and for your guidance. And we pray, Lord, that you will divinely intervene in all of this and that all will be well. And we know that you've got all things in control. And, Lord, we just ask for help. Forgive us, Lord, where we have faltered. Forgive us where we have sinned and turned our backs on you. And help us, Lord, to look to you more diligently. And help us, Lord, to where we can put our trust and our hope and our faith in you. And again, I lift up the many, many people, Lord, that have the corona, the many that have had it, and the people that are apprehensive about it, and the many, and all of us, Lord, that are dealing with it. We pray for your help, for your grace, for your mercy, for healing, and for help in the lives of all. We pray for those that are dealing with other health issues and other medical issues other than the corona. We lift them up and we pray for them as well. Traveling mercies for those who are traveling and will be traveling. Watch over them, be with them, and help them. Unspoken prayer requests, things that are going on either at work or at home or within ourselves. We pray for your help, for guidance, for direction, and for leadership. We thank you for answered prayer. We thank you, Lord, for giving us strength and for help. Thank you for all that you have done and are doing and just ask that you'll continue to be with us. And Lord, we pray for the many, many people who even through this still has not put their trust in you or do not know you as their Lord and Savior. Lord, I pray for these many, many people that are not saved, that do not have this situation to where they need to look at. Because we live here, and as you know and as we know, this is only temporary. But what takes place when we stand before you is for all eternity. And so we pray for those who do not know Jesus Christ, whomever they may be, a friend, co-worker, a relative, a stranger, whomever. We pray for salvation. We thank you, Lord, again for your many blessings. We thank you for all that you've done and are doing. And again, we lift up all the prayers and all the concerns. There have been many today. And we pray and we ask for your help, for your grace, and for your mercy. 
This we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us stand this time as thou come to lead us in our offertory hymn, hymn number 581. We have heard the joyful sound. having our faith in God. Have faith in God when your pathway is lonely. He sees and knows all the ways you have tried. Never alone are the least of his children. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Trust his word and be patient. 
Have faith in God, He'll answer yet. Have faith in God, He's on His throne. Have faith in God, He watches over His home. He cannot fail, He will prevail. Have faith in God, have faith in God. Have faith in God in your pain and your sorrow. His heart is touched with your grief and despair. Cast all your cares and your burdens upon him and leave them there, oh, leave them there. Have faith in God, he's on his throne. Have faith in God, he watches over his home. He cannot fail, he must prevail. Have faith in God, have faith in God. Have faith in God, though all else fail about you. Have faith in God, he provides for his own. He cannot fail, though all kingdoms shall perish. He rules, he reigns upon his throne. Have faith in God, he's on his throne. Have faith in God, yes, he watches over his own. He cannot fail, he will prevail. Have faith in God, have faith in God. Amen. This is what we need to have, not just through this time, but throughout our life, no matter what, is having faith in God and His strength, His power, and all that takes place. And today I want us to look at a person <clears throat> who did exactly that a few thousand years ago. She put faith in God. She put her trust in God as well. Exodus chapter 2 and verses 1 through 10, Jehoshaphat, the mother of Moses. Now remember now, at this point, the people of Israel had been enslaved for some 350 years. Now God told Abraham that he would enslave his, his, his people, these are the people he's talking about, for 400, over 400 years, exactly to be point 430 years. And this he told him in Genesis chapter 15, he said the people will be enslaved over 400 years. And we do know that they were enslaved for 430 years, according to Exodus chapter 12. There it says when the 430 years had reached it, God, they went out. And at that point, so right now, Moses is going to be born. But even with the birth of Moses, there is still 80 more years to go. He said, well, how did you reach that figure of 80 years more to go? Well, the first 40 years, he was under the house of Pharaoh. He taught, and he was taught by the best for 40 years. And, and then according to the word of God, it says that God appeared unto Moses in the burning bush when he was 80 years old and told him to go back to Egypt and take my people and bring them back to this place that I will show you. Now this, if you want to look, you can go back and, and read the account according to what uh, is said from Stephen in Acts chapter 7, as he so said, that God appeared unto Moses after 40 years when he was in the desert. So 40 years in Egypt, 40 years in the desert, makes Moses 80 years old when he was bringing the people back from Egypt and out. So there's another 80 more years that they have to go from this point here before they even leave Egypt. So, but unknowing to all of them who are living here at this time, they knew that God was going to send a deliverer 
They just didn't, I guess, I don't know if they just didn't realize that it was going to take this long or if they remembered what God had told to Abraham that they would be enslaved for over 400 years before all of that would happen. So at this point, they thought that God wasn't doing anything at all. The people would cry out to God for help, but no help had come to the people. But God did have a plan, and he had a timetable. It was according to his timetable. Now, the Egyptians during this time, they not only made slaves of God's people, but they also mistreated them as well. They did not remember Joseph. They did not remember how God helped the Egyptians through Joseph. A new pharaoh came into the scene. And he, again, made slaves of God's people and mistreated them. As they were in slavery, God continued to bless his people. And, and as he blessed them, he multiplied them as to where they constantly grew and grew and grew into a large number of people. You could say they were almost rap uh, multiplying like rabbits. The Lord was just was just doing mighty works and revealing things. And the king noticed, the Pharaoh himself, he noticed the increase of the people and he became afraid of the increase of the Hebrew people as they were increasing. And again, the background of, the, of his fear is that the other nations, that they may help the other nations to overthrow the Egyptians. So he put a decree that all the baby boys born to the Hebrews at a certain time. They would be to thrown into the Nile either to drown or to be devoured by crocodiles. But the, but the girls were not to be thrown into the Nile. Now, his reasoning behind that, even though this is not said in here, this is what the thought, if you go back to history, the reasoning was is that he was going to intermarry or mix the girls with the Egyptian men as to where, okay, if I intermarry them, then they will have to defend the Egyptians and not go against us anymore if we do all of that. But God saw things otherwise. Again, so we have here during this time in which Moses is born, there was this decree. Now, it, was, it didn't affect, evidently, it, 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 this decree wasn't around when, when Aaron was born, Moses' brother. Now, Aaron is three years older than Moses. And also now, Miriam is even older than both of them. So, uh, Miriam is anywhere from, they, they figure, depending upon, because we don't know exactly how old she is, is anywhere from five to seven, eight years old, somewhere around there, nine years old. Uh, they, they, have, they really don't have a, a time frame on her. All they have on is Moses and Aaron. We, only, we already know from Exodus that, that Aaron is three years older than Moses. So Moses is the baby of the family uh, for all intents and purposes. And we're going to see here where God intervened in the life of Moses using both Egypt, the Egyptians, and the Hebrews so that this baby would not be killed. Now, we don't know how many babies were indeed killed, uh, either by drowning or by uh, letting them feast upon the crocodiles or whatever. It was a sad time and a sad period in the life of the Hebrew people at this time. Uh, again, there is no number as far as with everything, but we see here. And what I want us to look at here is the faith of Moses' mother, Jehoshaphat, and also God's divine intervention during this time upon uh, Moses and what takes place in it. Now, everybody knows the name of basically Moses' mom. Does anybody remember the name of Moses' dad? Yes, Hemram. Yeah, he's mentioned in Exodus chapter 6. Moses doesn't give us the name of his mom and dad really until Exodus chapter 6, six chapters later. Uh, he, uh, he, even in here, all it says is 
uh, if you notice, notice in verses 1 through 4. Now a man of the house of Levi married a Levite woman, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. And when she could no longer, when she, when she could hide him no longer, she made a papyrus basket, that is, she made an ark, and she covered it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Amazing, isn't it? Now, mom and dad, now, I understand as well that Jehoshaphat was married to Amram, and, and she was his aunt, and they were married. So it was okay back then to do this, but later on, according to the law, it was not okay to marry your aunt. So uh, evidently she was young, but he was still, she was still considered his aunt, and so she, he married uh, his aunt, and they had children, Miriam, Aaron, and now Moses. They had, they were all there. And again, Miriam was the oldest concerning this. Uh, and now when, when she saw, and notice it says, when she saw that he was a fine child. Now according to the, he, according to the New Testament, which was written for us in Hebrews chapter 11, there it says that Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw that he was no ordinary child and they were not afraid of the king's edict. So I don't know how God revealed to, to Moses' mom and dad exactly how this child was, ordinary, was not an ordinary child or how he was a fine child. I don't know if God talked to both of them and said, listen, he is the one that I'm going to send to deliver. We don't know. All we know is they looked upon this child and they saw that he was no ordinary child, that he was a special child that God had plans for. Jehoshaphat for three months, she did her best to hide a newborn baby from the Egyptians. And this was no easy task. They had people going around, specifically, looking for Hebrew baby boys that were being hidden. So this was no easy task. Now, Moses was a fine child. He was a good child. But you know what also he had? A good set of lungs. And what three-month-old doesn't have a good set of lungs? So it's kind of hard for that time, and here it is, three months, and it says she could no longer hide him. And I think it's because, hey, three months, and he was, you know, crying or doing everything and, you know, making himself known concerning and testing out his own lungs and his own times and everything else. So, so Jehoshaphat, I think, did a sensible thing by faith. She put Moses in an ark, in the Nile, and she put it in a place where I think she knew where Pharaoh's daughter would come and as Miriam watched over Moses concerning this. Now, this is not recorded anywhere in scripture or anything. I just feel as though I think God revealed this to Jehoshaphat and she by faith obeyed the advice of the Lord, and there she did, she put her newborn baby, three months old, in this basket, in the Nile. In the Nile. And again, again, I'm thinking, she put it in a place, because the Nile is a, a pretty long place. She put it in a specific place where she knew the princess would come and bathe regularly. And there she put that child. In the ark. And, and again, this takes real faith to do this. I don't know which, now many of you are mothers here. I don't know which one of you, your mothers, would you do such a thing as this? As put your child in a basket with tar, make it waterproof, and put it in the Nile, where they're still susceptible to crocodiles and other things as well. 
I don't know if any of you mothers would do it. But what other choice? Now ask yourself, what other choice would she have had? And I really believe that she prayed to the Lord and asked for help and for advice and for guidance because she could no longer hide her three-month-old for whatever reason what was going on. I, and I really think that she did this and I think the Lord revealed to her that this was the thing to do. And we're going to see this as well. Again, God divinely intervening in this whole process. This is not a coincidence or taking a chance and rolling some dice. This here is, I, I really believe, is a divine thing that God put upon her heart. And again, she has placed the child where many baby boys were being destroyed in the very Nile that was there. And, and again, we, we see this took a great amount of faith on the, on the part of Je Jehoshaphat in order to do such a thing as that. And then have, his, then, have her, then have his sister there, Miriam, stand at a distance to see what would happen, what would take place. Again, and so the second thing we see here after the birth of Moses is you notice the cry of Moses. Even this, even the cry of Moses, I feel, is of the Lord. Notice it says in verse 5 and 6, there Miriam is standing at a distance to see what's going to take place with the basket because she knew that the princess comes and bathes right there. They knew this. And he says, Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe, and her attendants were walking along the river bank. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her slaves to get it. She opened the basket and saw the baby. He was crying, and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. So again, what do we see here? Now, the, the hand of the Lord here is being revealed concerning with Moses and what, and what Jehoshaphat has done. Again, this is, not, this is no coincidence. Again, this is a place where Pharaoh's daughter would often come to bathe, and they knew this. And by God's divine intervention, I didn't say this. J. Vernon McGee, McGee has said this. He said that he felt, feels as though the Lord pinched the baby to make him cry, and, when, and then when Pharaoh's daughter saw it, she had compassion upon this child. Ah, that's possible. But again, we see that God has brought the two things together. The crying of the baby, she looks upon this baby, and she knew now that this was a Hebrew. She knew this, looking at it. And she also knew the eating that her dad, Pharaoh, had also decreed. She knew this. She knew that this Hebrew baby was to be thrown into the Nile and be destroyed. But again, notice it says in it, as the baby was crying, she had compassion. She felt sorry for him. Again, I feel as though the Lord put compassion upon the heart of Pharaoh's daughter. God often raises friends from people of even among the enemy. He often does this. And we see this happening in many cases. What a turn of events. A Hebrew baby and an Egyptian princess. The daughter of Pharaoh, who proclaimed Edom, throw all the baby boys into the Nile. Pharaoh's daughter said, not me, Dad. I'm keeping this one. This is mine. I'm keeping him for me. She went against even her own dad's edict, his own decree. God truly works in mysterious ways, and even beyond our own understanding in many, many, many cases. Again, remember what the Word of God so says, and what he even said about Pharaoh, her dad, in Romans chapter 9. What is written for us in Romans chapter 9, verse 14 and following. It says, what can we say then? Is God unjust? Not at all. 
For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and compassion on whom I have compassion. It does not therefore depend upon man's desire or effort, but on God's mercy. For the scripture says to Pharaoh, Pharaoh, I raised you up for this very purpose, that I might display my power in you, and that my name might be, that my, and that my name might be proclaimed through all the earth. Therefore, God has mercy on whom he wants to have mercy, and hardens whom he wants to harden. You see, God uses different people, unknowing even to them. And we see this down through the ages. Look at what he did in the life when Daniel was enslaved and what he did with Nebuchadnezzar and Darius and many of the others. And then look at what took place even during the time when Jesus was there. Pontius Pilate and many of the other ones and Herod and, and so forth. And even if you go down through history, you will see where God divinely intervenes and he does many things and uses the enemy for his purpose and for his reason and for what takes place as well. God now is using Pharaoh's daughter. And why not his daughter? He's using Pharaoh. Now he's using Pharaoh's daughter for his own purpose and reason as well. To do what? To take care of Moses. Amazing. God works even beyond our comprehension. And that brings us to the third thing that we see here, the preservation of baby Moses, God's protection, God safeguarding Moses through his whole ordeal. Notice in verses seven through 10, as she there looks at this baby and knows it's a Hebrew baby, and, and notice Miriam and her conversation and what takes place here. And again, this all has to be of a Lord. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Notice, she didn't say, Shall I go get his mother? Shall I go get one of the Hebrew women? And who did she go get? She goes and gets mom. And, she said, and, 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 and Pharaoh's daughter said, Yes, go. And the girl went and got the baby's mom. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take care of the baby and nurse him for me, and I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water. Amazing. Here, Mar Miriam is a very, making a very helpful suggestion to get a Hebrew women, woman to nurse the baby. Again, though, we have to understand God's protection and safeguard over Moses. How many times has God has done this? If you go back even before this, look at what he did in the life with Joseph. That was no coincidence. Divine intervention in the life of Joseph and his brothers and from Pharaoh, from Pharaoh himself and Egypt and everything. Uh, again, we, we have him. Look how many times he later on, or I mean but prior to this, he even did with Abraham. How many times he saved Abraham from some of the things that he had done. And then later, David, Daniel, and many others. And then in the New Testament, again, we see the same thing. Peter, Paul, James, we, we, the list just goes on and on. And even during our time, how many times do you think God has divinely intervened in your own life? I know he has in mine. I know it. I have no doubt. I should even be standing here before you now. I know this. From my birth, I should not. I was a premature baby in 1953. And back then, it was precarious to be a premature baby. But even later on, I see many things and how God divinely intervened. And I'm sure you can do the same thing in your own life. And see how God had divinely intervened. Uh, again, we, we, we read time after time where God does the improbable and the impossible. Many times. And why? God is in control. Even today, people, we are fighting this virus, this corona. 
We are fighting this thing, and God is in control of this. There's a reason and purpose behind it all. And sometimes we may not understand why or how come. And I'm sure back then, they didn't understand all of it. As to why God would throw, allow some and not others. We don't know. But there's always a reason and a purpose behind everything. And God is in control. Moses is being cared for, notice, by his own mom. And she's getting paid for it. Amazing how God works. This brought joy to her heart and also I'm sure it just mystified, dumbfounded her as well. I'm sure she prayed and I'm sure she's walking by faith but even beyond all of this you know you can't beat that. It's amazing. So not only is Moses being spared from the crocodiles in the Nile or being drowned now He's going to grow up being educated by one of the finest schools and the finest people anywhere. He'll be taught many things by the Egyptians. He will be basically being, all this is being done because he can be an heir to Pharaoh. But with all of this, even though he grew up educated in the fine courts of Egypt, and he even fitted probably to be the next pharaoh because of being the son now of Pharaoh's daughter. He was in line. He could have. But, again, we see all of this in the providence of Almighty God. He chose not to be identified as an Egyptian, but to be identified as a Hebrew people belonging to God. This is what is recorded for us in Hebrews chapter 11 and in verse 24 and following. By faith, when Moses grew up, he refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than, when the, rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a short time. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ of a greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. By faith, he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He persevered because he saw him who was invisible. By faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. You see, he chose. And just like Joshua said, tells us today and reminds us, choose you this day whom you will serve. As far as me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You know, many people have put that aside and they're not serving the Lord as their one true God. They're full of idols. And they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing concerning it. And you remember now, the first commandment says, God is a very jealous God. He says, I am the Lord your God. And it's God who created us. We just didn't come out some gobbly goop. We were created by God for his set purpose. And we are to worship and to praise and glorify him. And Moses, even though he was educated in the best, he saw something even better than all of that fine education, food, and everything else. He saw the one true God, Jehovah God. Here we have to understand, Jehoshaphat, she put faith and trust in God, placing her son in a basket, in an aisle. Then Moses later, he himself, to put faith and trust in God. And today, people need to put faith and trust in God, and this comes by knowing Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, by coming before him, and as he said, repent of your sin, and put faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Moses put faith in what he knew was even greater than what Pharaoh had to offer. 
and put faith in the one true God. Today, by faith, put trust and faith in God. Put faith in Him, not in things of the world. And again, remember what Jesus told His disciples as well, and also us. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You trust in God, trust also in me. In my Father's house, there are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. And I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you may also be where I am. And the only way to get to that place that Jesus has prepared is through Jesus Christ and what he did at Calvary is by putting faith in his work on the cross by, and doing what the thief on the cross had done as well. He put faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and said, remember me when I come into your kingdom. And Jesus with a promise said, today you will be with me in paradise. Do you have that assurance today? Do you know that for sure? If not, I pray today you'll come to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. Let us stand. Almighty God, as we have heard your word, if there's any here today that have not truly put faith or trust in you, I pray, Lord, that you have opened their hearts, they have heard your word, and that they will come unto you and put faith and trust in you. They may not understand all of it, but Lord, it is clear from your word. All they need to do is put faith in you. And I pray, if any does not, that you have opened their hearts, and today they will come unto you by faith and walk with you, as did Joseph Ben, as did Moses, and those, as did so many, 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 and many others. We ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you have your Bible and your notebook, turn to hymn number 318. The nails are at hand. And Christ has spoken to you today. You come to this 318.
God in His Word has really spoke to us today that we need to walk by faith and not walk by sight or look by sight, but keep our eyes focused upon Him and do what He would have for us to do as we journey and as we go through this very difficult time in all of our lives. Again, pray for those who have been afflicted by it. Pray for them and pray for the families and for those who have lost a loved one. Pray for the many people who are hurting and pray for God's grace, mercy, and help upon each and every one of them as well. And for those who do not know Jesus Christ, pray for them. Pray for their soul. What we go through here is temporary. We go through this for a short time. And then after, we'll see, we'll stand before God and give an account of all that we've done. And it's for all eternity. So pray for those who do not know Jesus Christ. Pray for them, pray for their soul. Pray that God may open their hearts and their lives. Pray for each other. Pray for strength, for help, and for guidance as we deal with this ongoing. May God bless. And again, keep your eyes upon the Lord. If you need a mask, there's, there's some in the bag. You can take, them. You can take one with you uh, concerning that. And again, just be careful as you go out and about doing different things. Again, may God bless. Keep your eyes upon him. Now, please, in closing prayer. Heavenly Father, again, we come to Lord you. Thanking you for all this done for us, knowing, Lord, that you will watch over us, that you will take care of us, and, Father, that you have a plan for each and every one of us. I thank you, Lord, again for those who are able to come today, and I pray that each one is blessed, and again, that there's someone here that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, at least, Father, see has been planted. And that, Father, that seed will get watered and fed in the world. Be with us now as we leave, go our separate ways. Let us continue remembering each other throughout the week and raise each other up in prayer. Guide us direct us, Father, in our son's precious name we pray. Amen. Amen.